Hello, my name is Amy Lee, and I just wanted to welcome everybody who is a part of the Core Competencies Work Group meeting. This is what this meeting is. Um, let me introduce myself, and then I'm going to have um, my co-chair also uh, introduce herself. Um, again, my name is Amy Lee. I'm a professor from uh, Northeast Ohio Medical University and program director for the Consortium of Eastern Ohio Master of Public Health. Janet? Okay, hi. Thanks, Amy. Having the web and the picture on makes you want to act like a newscaster or something, but <laughs> I'm Janet Place, and I am at the uh, University of South Carolina Arnold School of Public Health, where I am the Director of Workforce Development. Great. And I want to introduce a new person um, to Public Health Foundation. Um, Kiana Jones is a new staff member. And um, so as project assistant, she's going to be supporting activities related to the Council on Linkages uh, between academia and um, public health practice, or many of you know that as the Council on Linkages. Um, and she's also going to be supporting this work group. In fact, she's going to be advancing the slides <laughs> for this particular <laughs> webinar. Um, Kiona, can you say hello and, and introduce yourself maybe a little further? Yeah, thanks, uh, Amy. Hi everyone, um, my, name is, my name is Kiona Jones and I just started two months ago as the new project assistant. Um, I'm working uh, with this unit as well as another unit. So um, yeah, I'll be advancing the slides for everyone and you might hear my name more in a few other work group meetings. Great, thanks so much Kiona. And now Janelle, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Amy. So we'll just um, wanted to remind everyone of just a few housekeeping items for today's meeting. Um, just a reminder that everyone's phone lines are currently muted. If you are using um, your phone for the audio portion today, please make sure you choose the phone call option in your control panel. And if you um, are using your computer mic and speakers, please choose the computer audio option. We will have lots of opportunities throughout the meeting for questions and feedback and are looking forward to your active participation in the discussion. To uh, have your phone or mic unmuted so you can speak, please use the raise hand feature. You can also type any questions or comments in the questions box in your control panel. And the, and the agenda, slides, and other materials are available for download in the handout section of your control panel. And we will be archiving, um, recording and archiving this uh, webinar and we'll make it available to all work group members following the webinar. And now to you. Uh, back to you, Amy. Yes. So um, here's the agenda. And I, I believe Janelle has sent it out to everybody um, before the meeting. Um, so we're going to do an update, um, look at some of the examples of the core competencies using collection redesign. Well, you can read all the rest. Um, and if there are any other items that, that uh, members of the work group want to cover at the end, we can certainly talk about those as well. And just as a reminder that the core competencies work group, this work group, guides the activities of the Council on Linkages related to core competencies for public health professionals. And uh, there are so many groups that use it already, thanks to your hard work. Uh, the Council on Linkages, again, is a collaborative of 22 national organizations focused on improving public health education and training practice and research. And activities of the Council on Linkages are supported by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So thank you so much, CDC. And um, next, we're going to have our update on the October Council on Linkages meeting, and Janet is going to do that. Okay, well, okay. Um, you can read a lot of this up there, and I don't want to belabor the point. We're going to be talking about a lot of the things we talked at the talked about at the council meeting uh, today. So. Um, the council met in October, and it was the third meeting of the year. Um, among other things, it featured a presentation from the Association for Community Health Improvement uh, on the work in building the population health competencies. Um, and um, also, um, there was discussion about ways to demonstrate the impact of council on linkages and its initiatives. 
and um, that includes the academic health departments as well as the core competencies. Um, and so um, we can go ahead and move on to the meat of this meeting. Uh, Janelle? Yes, thank you, Janet. Okay, so today we're really excited because we have um, something to share with you all. Um, so as mentioned during the July work group meeting, we are working to redesign the section of the Council on Languages website where we share examples of core competencies used. And we would appreciate your engagement in this process. So I would like to show you what we have so far in terms of this redesign. And please do keep in mind that this resource is currently in draft form and does remain a work in progress. And we really want to hear your thoughts about the format, um, how it's navigated, and, and anything else. So I will actually show you this resource now. OK. So the way this resource is currently set up, sorry, I'll make it a little bigger for you. There we go. Um, the way this is set up is that it is a connected, um, a series of connected web pages. And we have this navigation bar, which you can see on the left-hand side, which allows you to quickly access any um, of the pages within the whole system. So what we've done so far is build a page for each of the categories of examples of use that you'll find on the exist existing examples of use webpage. Um, so far, we haven't added any new content. So what you see here um, is on the existing page as well. So what happens right now, how it's set up, is that when you go to the main page, if you will, this is what you'll see. So we have an overview. Um, and like I said, this is just what's on the current examples of use web page. Um, but then from here, you can actually click through each of the categories. So we have the assessments where you'll find um, examples of training assessments, needs assessments, um, reports of assessments here that use the core competencies. Uh, we have a section on um, discipline specific sets of competencies. We have a section on, we have a you know, collection, as you are well familiar, a collection of job descriptions that incorporate the core competencies. We also have, um, which we'd like to build out a little more, but we have learning and management next networks, which train is the one we have on here currently. Uh, we have a professional development section and, of course, the collection of workforce development plans that incorporate the core competencies. So. Um, as I mentioned, we're continually redesigning this, and we would love to hear anyone's suggestions about, you know, if there's anything we should, any categories we should potentially add, or what do you think about how everything is, is navigated and how it's set up currently. So please share if you have any ideas. And again, you can choose, you can raise your hand, or, um, you know, in, input anything into the chat box and we'll read those aloud. Or if you have any questions, suggestions, questions, everything is welcome. And I can also take you through what, um, so we can use this workforce development plans collection as an example, but from here what would happen is you would click on this resource and it would take you to our collection of workforce development plans. So it's easily accessed um, from this main page. You can go to any of them. And so for instance, um, with discipline specific competencies, clicking on this part will take you to, um, we have a resource page built out for this particular example, and it, which provides a little more info um, about these competencies. And I think we have a question, so one second. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Um, the question is, is this available now? Um, it's actually not. It's currently not. Um, it's still in draft form on the back end of our of the website here at the Public Health Foundation. So it's not published in, in for public consumption yet, but we're hoping um, to have that available very, very soon. Um, but we just wanted to make sure, we wanted to 
get all your input in terms of, you know, how everything looks, how it's laid out, how we move through the different sections, and if you have any suggestions for how that's all done. And, and this is Ron, if I may add, the resources themselves that we're showing here are on the website. It's just not organized quite as nicely and neatly as shown here. So if you're looking to access these resources, you still can find them, but again, it's not as easy. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad it seems easier to view. We're hoping that it makes it a little more, as we continue to add resources, um, it's a little more, it's a little separated, so it's not currently all the resources are just on one web page. So potentially as we'd add more, you'd just be scrolling and scrolling. <laughs> so now it's kind of all separated into their um, relevant categories. Okay, well, I think we can move on and just feel free at any, you know, throughout the meeting, if you have anything that comes to mind, feel free to um, shoot that in the chat box and, uh, or raise your hand and we can we can continue. So um, I will now turn it over to Ron. Great, thank you so much, Janelle. And Janelle, I would also say to people, once it goes live, if people have additional feedback, they can provide that as well, because um, we are always looking to continuously improve what we have on our website. So please provide feedback now, tomorrow, in the future, all of the above. Okay, great. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. This discussion right now is a continuation of an earlier discussion from our last work group meeting. And as you may recall, um, during our last group work group meeting, uh, we began a discussion about discipline specific competency sets uh, that are based on the core competencies and having some way of indicating that within those actual sets. Um, well, since the time of the last meeting, we received a couple of comments, and let me just quickly review what those comments are. One comment was made that it might be good to have what the individual uh, said is inclusion criteria for determining how the core competencies were used, and for us to have some language that can indicate that the core competencies were used in developing the discipline-specific competencies, as well as putting it up on the website. As Janelle already showed on the, the resource and the examples of use, we do have several competency sets on our website. And what we're looking at is maybe moving forward as organizations request involvement of work group members, of staff, and others, that we have a way to um, indicate that within their competency sets if they wish to do that, as well as for us to um, put them up on, on the website. That was one comment was related to having some type of inclusion criteria. Another comment that was made was it, it would be helpful to have a resource or a primer on how to write different uh, sets of competencies or how to develop competencies. And, and the thought was that Right now, if you look in our field, there's all sorts of different approaches, and could we, as the Council on Linkages, provide some guidance? It wouldn't be, you have to do this, but it would be guidance that would help people in their development of competencies. For instance, we have uh, in, in slide sets that we use when we talk about the competencies and how they would develop, we include in that um, some information on the competency rules that we employed, like only using one verb, and only one competency within the competency statement, uh, not having the same competency in multiple domains, domains, et cetera. So would that be useful to have some type of a primer that people could use? So what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time talking about the first comment, which was the inclusion criteria. And some of the of what, we, what we thought about um, is what are people already doing with discipline-specific competencies that demonstrate that they use the core? And could we more formally just put something up on our website, let, let organizations and individuals know that here are ways that you can use the competencies and demonstrate their use? So for instance, uh, if the discipline-specific competencies use the Council on Linkages domain, that would be a, an example of how it was used. Uh, the use of similar tiers or tier structure. 
showing a crosswalk between the discipline-specific competencies and the core. Involving PHF staff or work group members on committees in the development of the competencies, and that's been done increasingly over the past year or so. Um, and or they can be including a statement detailing how the competencies were used in the development of those discipline-specific competencies. So there are a couple of questions. One is, what else would be a way for an organization to note and demonstrate use of the core competencies in developing discipline-specific competencies? And the second question is, should we come up with some language that we could um, suggest to organizations that, you know, if, there are, if they are using the core competencies, um, we can give them some language that they can put within the document that says that they have used the core competencies and also we would then put this up on our, on our website. So just uh, comments on the criteria as well as the whole thought about having some language that we come up with that organizations can use within their document that says that they're built upon and based on the core competencies. So Janelle, let me go back to you if there are any comments that have come in or if anybody has raised their hand and wishes to make a comment over the phone or the computer. Okay, we do have, okay, I think this is, and then let me know if I'm, um, if this was for me or for Ron, but just um, for this part of the website, couldn't we include other competency sets that were not based on the council and linkages competencies, but where overlap exists? Um, I would say that what when, first I'm not exactly sure how we could um, know if overlap exists if they weren't based on the core or use the core in some manner. But what we try to do with the Council on Linkages website, and in particular the core competencies website, is if we have examples of use, which is where this fits within the website, that it would have to demonstrate some use of the competencies. So I would think that we would not be looking to just take any set of discipline-specific competencies and put it up. And certainly I could see a use for that but not within the Council on Linkages core competencies part of the website where we're demonstrating the use of the core. I don't know if any of our team here have other thoughts. That makes sense. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. Think, I think there are a lot, um, I think it's a, a reasonable point that there are a lot of competency sets out there and there may be overlap in terms of the types of content they address or that sort of thing. Um, but I guess, for, for us, the main purpose is to um, show how the core competencies are being used and give organizations examples of how the core competencies are being used. So we've sort of shied away from that a little bit, although I, I could see if there was, um, you know, an opportunity where things did seem to be coming together and aligning really well, that having those sorts of discussions, I think, is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, and I, and I also believe that within the uh, Public Health Partners website of the National Library of Medicine mm -hmm. that uh, there is, they do have a, a variety of discipline specific competencies in there that did not use the core competencies. So maybe the National Library of Medicine, that website becomes a place for the multitude of, multi of discipline specific competencies. Other comments, suggestions, and, and also remember you can raise your hand and we will unmute you. It would be nice to hear other voices as well. Well, let's, um, let me ask this question. Should we move forward? with putting together on our website uh, the information on how one can demonstrate use of the core competencies in developing the discipline-specific competencies 
and develop some language that we could say, you know, feel free to use this language if you are using the core competencies in the development of your discipline specific competencies. Any comments about should we move forward with that or should we not? Ron, is there a way to take a poll? There is a way. I don't know if we have it set up. Let me see. Um, I was thinking about that too, Janet, and I was uh -huh. afraid to ask the question because I might get shot here. So, <laughs> but it's a, no, it's a good question. I don't know, Janelle, is it? Okay, then why up? don't we ask, is there anybody who doesn't think we should move forward? We do have one confirmation. Okay, good. <laughs> develop the language, yes. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also just as a reminder where this all came from is uh, some organizations are beginning to ask us, can we say that what we're doing is developed on the core competencies, is there some language, and by all means we want to encourage others to use the competencies, it helps with alignment within the field, um, it reduces confusion within the field, uh, and um, so we thought it would be appropriate to bring it up to the work groups. And, and thus far, it sounds like there's, I haven't heard any objections yet. We have a couple con confirmations. Um, so we have a comment that uh, this is really valuable work. I think we should be clear about who we think the core audience for these would be. Um, another comment to be proactive and guide us. <laughs> it helps provide us authority within our institutions to point to PHF and say, this is what they suggest. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It sounds like those last two comments relate also to the other comment we received about some type of a primer on, um, you know, quote, good practices in developing competencies. And, you know, one of the things that we've thought about here is since we have some of that in slides, you know, could we just even pull from that and create a, a little uh, one pager, uh, but there also may be somebody like Kathy Miner who guided the process in developing the core who would be willing to put together a couple of pages as a primer for that, and then we could put that up on the website. Kathy's not on the call, so I could volunteer her. Any other suggestions, comments, thoughts, concerns? Okay, well, Janet and Amy, as the co-chairs, it, it seems like we have a green light to proceed on this. Uh, if you feel otherwise, let us know. No, that that's, looks good. Yeah, it sounds excellent. Great. Well, thank you, and thank you for the feedback. Okay, Kathleen, okay. I'm going to turn this over to you now for the next part of our agenda. Great. Um, we're just full of feedback today, <laughs> requests for feedback. Um, so I wanted to spend just a couple minutes talking about uh, an, uh, some upcoming uh, feedback activities <laughs> and give you a little bit of a, a heads up of some of the things that we have um, in the works for the next uh, few months. Um, both in terms of activities for um, activities of the work group itself, but also in terms of activities of our performance improvement competency subgroup. So I don't know how many people on the phone might be involved in that as well, but um, here's, here's what's in the works right now or what we're dreaming up. Um, so we do have, and you've probably heard us mention over the last little while, um, there, there's been work underway to develop uh, set two sets of discipline specific competencies. One focused on performance improvement in public health and one focused on uh, more population health competencies. Um, so we are currently in the process of drafting sets of competencies and getting that ready and then we'll be opening both of those um, widely for feedback over the next couple of months. Um, so to talk first about just a, I just wanted to give a little bit of background because I don't know how many people are familiar with each one of these individual competency sets. 
Um, both of them uh, build on the core competencies for public health professionals. Um, and so first, the competencies for performance improvement specialists in public health are what we refer to as performance improvement uh, or PI competencies. Um, are a set of competencies that are being designed to define and describe skills and competencies desirable for performance improvement professionals in public health. Uh, and these are really meant to expand upon existing performance improvement competencies within the core competencies. So uh, really go that step further, maybe dig a little bit deeper um, for people who are specifically focused on performance improvement activities as part of their uh, everyday job. Um, so for example, the core competencies uh, contain a competency related to developing strategies for continuous quality improvement. Um, and the PI competencies, the current draft of the, the performance improvement competencies, takes this just one step farther and digs a little bit deeper and, and focuses on um, coordinating development, implementation, and evaluation of the continuous quality improvement plan. So moving a little bit making it a little bit more specific and more detailed uh, for performance improvement professionals. Um, so there is, um, I mentioned as I started talking, a performance improvement competencies subgroup that's part of the core competencies work group that was set up uh, earlier this year or the end of last year um, to really focus on guiding this effort to develop uh, performance improvement competencies for the field. Um, so there's been a lot of work done through that subgroup over the last uh, year or so to take an existing draft of uh, competencies and gather some information to be able to refine and revise it. So there was a big effort um, to do an environmental scan to look at uh, literature, web-based resources, do some interviewing, listening sessions, talk to people, get some feedback um, to produce uh, what is the current draft of the, this competency set. Um, so the current draft contains 19 competencies. I put a few examples on the screen here of the types of content um, that you'll find in this competency set. Um, so things like um, using quality improvement and performance management methods and tools to improve uh, performance within organizations, um, employing teams to improve performance um, and aligning quality improvement and performance management with uh, the plans that organizations may be involved in, so organizational or community plans, such as strategic plans, community health improvement plans, those sorts of things. So those are just a few examples um, of what the, the type of content that's contained in that competency set. We are currently um, working on revising or finalizing that draft. Um, with the aim to have it available for uh, public uh, feedback um, early next year. So with the, the second, I mentioned there are two sets of competencies. We also have a, a set of priority competencies for population health professionals that are currently in draft form. Um, this project, similar to the performance improvement competencies, has been an ongoing project over the last couple of years. Uh, to work on uh, pulling a draft of these competencies together. Um, this one uh, is being done as a collaboration between uh, the Public Health Foundation here and the Association for Community Health Improvement, which is an arm of the American Hospital Association, um, and is meant to describe desired skills for population health professionals. Uh, and you can see sort of the, the example or the working definition um, that we're using in terms of our audience for this competency set. So looking at non-clinical hospital health system, public health and healthcare professionals who are engaged in assessment of population health needs and development, delivery and improvement of population health programs, services and practices. So this type of work, as you might imagine, can encompass sort of a variety of activities um, that is going on within these organizations. But things like conducting community health needs assessments, uh, developing community health improvement plans, implementing community-based interventions, uh, and building coalitions to address community health priorities. So with this competency set, there has been some initial feedback collected, uh, working again in partnership with the Association uh, for Community Health Improvement, as well as the Catholic Health Association. Um, and we've used that feedback to revise the drafts over the last little while. 
Um, and the current draft of this set of competencies contains 31 competencies that are organized into uh, five categories. So these are the categories that you see on the screen, uh, hopefully. Community health assessment, community health improvement planning and action, community engagement and cultural awareness, system thinking, and organization, organizational planning and management. And I think we have uploaded um, the draft of this competency set into um, the handouts uh, panel. So if you go to the right-hand side of your screen, uh, you should be able to download that PDF and see the full set of competencies as it stands right now. Um, so similarly, again, to the PI competencies, we're in the process right now of, of updating, finalizing this draft so that we can open it um, for feedback, for public feedback. Um, and we are hoping that uh, that will be done uh, sort of the middle of next month. So we're looking at December for that timeline. Um, so I just wanted to say a, a few words about the feedback process. Um, so we are currently in the planning stages of a, a feedback process for both of these competency sets. So <laughs> I will warn you, as you might imagine, we're in planning, things may change, nothing's set in stone at this point. Um, but, but we are looking uh, to have both sets of competencies available um, for the population health competencies in December. We're aiming for January with the performance improvement competencies and being able to collect feedback on both of those competency sets over several months in order to uh, refine the draft. So as that process gets you know, closer to reality and, and starts to get underway, we will be um, sharing lots of information about the processes as we're going through them, and that will happen in a variety of ways. So uh, first and foremost, we will be sure to keep all of you um, updated and engaged in the process. Um, we'll be communicating with you directly as members of the core competencies work group and the PI competencies um, subgroup. And you'll also should regularly see information about this process through the Council on Linkages update, which I believe many of you received, but if you don't, just let us know and we will make sure you do, uh, as well as the Public Health Foundation's e-news, e which is the, our monthly newsletter. Um, in addition to kind of the, the PHS avenues or communication mechanisms, we'll also be working closely with a variety of partner organizations to help um, share, spread the word about the feedback process so you uh, may see content in their newsletters and other communications um, as well. So as we get this started, we would really, as always, uh, you know, appreciate your participation in this effort to gather feedback. Your feedback uh, itself on either of these competency sets um, uh, is very welcome and we would love to have it at any point in time. Uh, and we would really also appreciate your help in spreading the word. We're trying to sort of cast the net as, as broad as possible and get as much feedback as we can. And so uh, any ideas, suggestions, any people who you think would be good to engage in the process or, or ways that you see for um, letting people know that the process is happening, uh, we'd really appreciate that. Um, any, so we'll be sharing as these drafts get finalized and ready to um, go out the door for the feedback process. We'll be sharing uh, the, the final draft with all of you. Um, any initial reactions to the draft, to anything as part, that's part of the process, uh, we'd be happy to hear it and you can send any of that content to Janelle or, or to me. Um, and also I mentioned we have email lists for both of those newsletters. So if you're not on the Council on Linkages Update or PHS eNews and would like to be, just let us know and we'll add you. Uh, if you are part of either the core competencies work group or the PI competencies subgroup and would like to be also be part of the other one, just let us know that too and we'll make sure you get on those, you know, sort of group specific messages that will go out over the next little while. Um, so I mentioned, I, I think I mentioned already, but we are anticipating gathering feedback um, starting in December or January and running through um, the end of February um, or end of March, depending on the competency set. Uh, that feedback will all be um, used to refine the competency sets um, and your engagement with that process when we get to that point as well would be hugely helpful. Uh, we are looking, we are aiming to uh, finalize these sets of competencies uh, and be able to share the, the finished versions with the public health community um, around the middle of 2018. Um, so that's just kind of, I realize 
it's a little general uh, at this point, um, but we just sort of wanted to let you know that, that all of that is in the works. And I'd be happy if anyone has any um, comments or reactions right now, I'm happy to hear that. We're also um, happy to hear anything as we, at any point as we go through this process. Kathleen, we do have one comment so far, actually, um, and a suggestion to share the survey with state health departments and ASHO mm -hmm. and HO. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, we have a, a, a list of partner organizations, and, and ASHO and HO are going to be great um, partners for working on that. Um, so, yes, great, thank you. Any, oh. Yep. Yes. So, um, sorry, the next comment uh, relates to state health departments specifically. And yes, we are hoping to, uh, our aim is to work with ASTO um, to reach out to their member organizations. So, we, we hope to get feedback from state health departments, local health departments, um, territorial and tribal health departments as well. Um, and that will be hugely helpful because we really want to make sure that you know, the competencies, we've had a lot of feedback on the competencies already from various um, partner organizations and that sort of stuff, but, but we do want to make sure that the competencies reflect the reality of, um, you know, real life work. So, so that's going to be very important as we, as we look to finish the, the or to refine and, and finalize the draft. Any other thoughts? comments. Um, as Jill mentioned earlier, feel free to continue typing in the chat box or uh, we can also open phone lines at any time. So if you want to speak, if that's a little bit easier than trying to, to type it, um, just raise your hand and we can open the lines if not as well. Cool. All right. Well, if you think of anything over the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes while we wrap up the meeting, please feel free to just um, jump it in the chat box at any time or raise your hand. And, and also do feel free to get in touch with us after the meeting. If there's, um, you know, something strikes you a week from now, we'd still love to hear it. Um, so with that, I will turn it back over to Janet. Okay. Thanks, Kathleen. And thanks, Ron. And um, thank you, Janelle, for all the work you're doing. And um, you know, and how well you reiterated how important the work group is in uh, helping to get the word out about not just these competency sets, but about the new resources or the, the modified resources um, in the, on the council website. And um, I mean, this is, this is really good. Um, we, we put it out there for comments, um, but want to give a, additional time just for comments or questions about anything pertaining to the competencies um, and uh, or thoughts you've had or, or experiences you have or uh, tools to share, um, you name it. Now, uh, Janelle, I can't read any of the, I can't see any of the questions that come out. Um, and um, so when questions come up on the chat box, you'll have to say something because I can't see those. Um, yeah. Okay, also, you know, maybe we you go ahead and open the phones so we can hear some voices. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I can't open all of them at once, but we can, you know, feel free to raise your hands if you have we can tell, we can just unmute you really, really quickly. So if you have anything to ask of the work group, um, the folks on the call today, or just anything you'd like to share, get you know your own feedback on it. Um, feel free to to go ahead and, and do that now. Okay, uh, Jen, thank you. You have your hand raised. We're going to unmute you now. So you should be unmuted. Jen, are you there? Right. Might have to unmute our own phone. But. Yeah, it's 
possible, Jen, that you have muted yourself potentially. Um, but we'll leave you open in case you. <laughs> Any questions in the box? Not yet, no. Um, well, as we said, you know, the the folks there at the council are always available to receive comments and suggestions and, uh, you know, whatever you need regarding the uh, competencies, and that's their job. So. Um, you can follow up at any time uh, with any of the questions you might have. And um, so with that, I'm just going to turn it back over to Amy, who will wrap up the meeting. Oh, one second, Janet. We have a couple comments. Oh, good, good. Uh, yeah, they just came in. So uh, one is, let's see, will the population health competencies make a distinction between undergraduate versus graduate level training? because those listed in the handout seem mostly at the graduate level. Do you know, I can answer that one. The, the competencies themselves are geared towards people who have responsibilities within um, hospitals in particular, like community, community benefit professionals, really not focused on um, education levels, more focused on the responsibilities individuals have. Um, and that's something we, we actually, years ago learned through the core competencies we we at one point had them uh sort of different categories related to levels of education and over time the, the practice mm -hmm. community suggested that it really should be focused more on function what people do rather than the specific education they have or the degree program they may be in right and like the core these are the population health competencies are practice based Thank you. Um, we're just trying to do a little troubleshooting, see if we can yeah. get Jen's <laughs> phone line unmuted. Uh, we have a question, probably for Ron or I. Should we be addressing how clinical professionals need to connect with public health resources? Um, can we? Can I get a little bit more information on on that? Uh, can we possibly unmute you so you could describe it a little bit more, the question? Nothing coming in at the moment. I mean, the one uh, thing I can't, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, so it's just Doug's hand. Okay. Hello? Oh, hello. hello, Doug. <laughs> hey, hey, this is Doug in Tucson, uh, University of Arizona. I was thinking about, uh, like, you know, we talk about re re uh, readmission rates for hospitals, and a lot of the reasons for readmission is what doesn't get done in the community for patients. Correct. And so how do we get clinical people to say, you know, we're discharging you, but these are some things you should be doing if a hospital doesn't have a good case management system? Um, that would be one one thing, or even even doing uh, ambulatory care, you know, in, in a doctor's office, um, having them understand what resource, what community resources are available to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that lots of physicians, even if I'm in an academic institution, um, I know we don't train all our students that way, or our residents that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Amy, you have anything to say about that? That's kind of your purview. Um, yeah, it, it probably depends on um, the institution as to how much information they um, provide. Um, but, you know, as there are more and more public health programs, you know, they like to have a little influence on um, what medical students and um, maybe even through, you know, continuing medical education and um, some other ways of getting out to the clinicians on um, some of those kinds of resources that are available. So, and this is, 
it's does not what just it is. They're learning, but should we be creating some? Maybe maybe it's a difference of the competencies, right? But well, yeah, it's an opportunity for us to influence what's happening. And Doug, this is Ron. Um, if I may chime in a little bit on that, the there are folks down at at Duke working on um, a set of uh, working on the, the practical playbook, which is looking at primary care and public health and how there could be greater uh, collaborative work. And they're looking at some resources and competencies. I think they're starting with family medicine. And, and your timing is good here because um, uh, I'll be talking with them, I think, in early December because we're looking at how do you build on the population health competencies that, that we've developed and what they're trying to do. And really, at the end of the day, at the healthcare sector level, we're trying to get the non-clinicians and the clinicians to be aligning their efforts to be addressing what is so critical in terms of community health. A lot of work to be done there. So I think competencies, that's a place to start in some of these areas. Uh, we've begun even looking at courses potentially within train that might be helpful. So one of the things that we're planning to do uh, once the population health competencies are finalized is, is we're developing a training plan uh, initially around community health improvement so that we have more than just the competencies out there, but a way for people to learn a little bit more about that. Now, how that ultimately plays out with the clinical community, not yet sure, but that's a question I'll be sure to ask um, in mid-December when we when we meet with the folks working on family medicine competencies. And Ron, the I mean, the population health competencies are really, I mean, they're based on the public health competencies and the whole term population health is an attempt to make public health more palatable um, to clinicians. Um, and so all these issues around community assessment and uh, I mean, those are all public health skills, and this is a way to get that, to bring this into uh, clinical education. And actually, the population health competencies um, have been driven by those who are doing the community community benefit work when they right. sort of when they were turning to us saying, "We don't know what we need to do. We don't know what we need to know. These public health competency things seem pretty good." So then the thought was, how do you take those and pull out what's critical for the hospital professionals, change some of the language so it speaks to people, and uh, move on from there. So a lot of work to be done. And Doug, appreciate your comment on that. So um, this is be helpful here. I always think differently. And thanks for giving me that information about Duke. I know they have a, a really strong family medicine program there, too. Um, so I'm not surprised they're taking the lead on it. Well, they've also taken the lead on the all the work around integration of primary care and public health and um, the practical playbook and, you know, and those things that have been sort of the textbook for uh, cross-sector collaboration. Yeah. My, my wife happens to be the chair of family medicine here at the U of A. Ah, uh, there you go. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be... I got a lot of insight from her. That's good. <laughs> good. Doug, I'll be work, uh, meeting with uh, Lloyd Mishner. Yep. Yeah. He's the man. So um, this is Amy again. Um, if you kind of go back a step to medical school, which is the venue that I'm a little more familiar with, um, Rika uh, Mishiro wrote an article back in 2010 um, called Medical Education for a Healthier Population Reflections on the Flexner Report from a public health perspective and um, provided a lot of population um, health type of competencies meant for um, undergraduate and graduate um, medical education. And it included some of the concepts that Doug was talking about as well. So um, there are those set of competencies out there, um, at least for those levels. Well, thank you, Amy. That's that's important information for us because uh, Rika is one of our Public Health Foundation board members. Yes. So I'll, I'll be sure to read the article. <laughs> and we've used some of, um, oh, I always forget the acronyms, but AAMC, we've used their, they have a set of competencies right. that was used in 
our work on this. It was one right. of the various sets of competency that we looked at in terms of yeah. pulling this I'll email you this, together. I'll email you the citation. <laughs> I, and they, I wonder if it's the same set of competencies that you're using. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. We we looked through. I think maybe 15, 20 different um, competency sets or things like competency sets in this in the population health arena. However, mm -hmm. it was defined. Um, to yeah, you know, we did crosswalks and and looked for different concepts. So quite helpful. Um, okay. I think so, Jen. I would like to try one more time and see if we can unmute you so you can uh, share your comment. So I'm going to. So you should be unmuted now. Let's we'll see if it works this time. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, sorry about that. Computer speakers, a computer mic. I think on a mic. Um, oh. yeah. You're welcome to call in if you if you have access to a phone right now, but um, feel free to just, you know, you can type it in or email us, <laughs> whatever is easier for you, Jen. Sorry about that. Or we can have a conversation after. Yeah, we can get on the phone later. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you, Jen. And I don't see any more um, hands raised or comments at the moment. So let's uh, let Amy wrap it up. Amy, you're muted, I think. I put on my camera. I didn't put on my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you all for participating in this meeting. Um, Janet shared with us the October highlights from the Council on Linkages meeting. And then Janelle showed us that fabulous web page on all of those um, resources that are organized um, in a uh, more accessible fashion. You know, all of those workforce development plans, the job descriptions, etc. Thank you for that. Um, and Ron apparently got the green light to go ahead to start working on these discipline specific competency sets. Um, so you'll be hearing more about that in future meetings. And then Kathleen gave us the heads up that um, two more kinds of competency sets are coming out, the performance improvement and the population health competencies. Um, and, you know, we really, of course, depend on your feedback. And so when the email is sent um, for your feedback, please take a look at them and, um, you know, the competencies will be much stronger with your input. And then finally, um, you know, maybe run, is there going to be a new project from Doug's um, uh, suggestion on maybe um, clinician-based competencies or something like that? We don't know. Um, although it appears that, Ron, you take suggestions very seriously. So <laughs> we'll see what comes out of that. <laughs> well, I, and, and it may be the folks in, at Duke are developing it, and, and maybe we'll be asking for, uh, you know, a couple of volunteers from the work group who could participate in their competency development initiative if they're looking for that. Excellent. We'll look forward to hearing more about that when you after you meet with Lloyd. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I sent you that uh, citation for Rika's um, article. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and as a reminder, please contact um, the staff, or, um, probably Janelle, um, to get the Council on Linkages update, that monthly newsletter. Um, if you're not on the list, and also the two other monthly newsletters, the uh, um, Public Health Foundation e-news and Public Health Learning, um, and learn about all of the other um, initiatives the Public Health Foundation is doing on quality improvement, performance management, and workforce development. Um, so if you want to get that news, please contact Janelle. And um, if there isn't anything else, are we adjourned?
Sounds fair. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.